Consider charcoal at room temperature. No reaction. Consider charcoal in slightly different circumstances, and we have a reaction. To understand this, we're going to take a look at something called collision theory. First off, what are the ideas behind collision theory? First of all, we begin with the fact that in order for a reaction to occur, the molecules must collide. Now, bimolecular or two-body collisions are far more frequent than multi-body collisions are. But let's look more closely at the nature of this collision. First of all, in order for a reaction to occur, the collision must be of sufficient energy. We call that sufficient energy the activation energy. Also, the collision must have appropriate geometry. They must hit at the right angles. Let's look at what this means. For my first situation, the blue particle is moving too slow. It collides with our reactant and no reaction occurs because it lacks sufficient energy. In my second collision, the particle is moving faster, but it lacks the appropriate geometry for the reaction to occur. And here in my third situation, I have both sufficient energy in the collision and the appropriate geometry. So these two conditions must be met in order for a reaction to occur. We're going to look at factors that might affect this rate of reaction. First, let's consider concentration. Here we have low concentration and in the second beaker a higher concentration. Increasing concentration reduces the distance between my particles. As a react, they are more likely to have more frequent collisions between the two particles. So higher concentration generally leads to a higher rate of reaction because you have more frequent collisions. Let's look at the effect of pressure. Now a note here about pressure, pressure only affects gaseous species. So if I have my substances at say pressure one and I increase the pressure, you'll notice again a reduction of the distance between my particles. This again leads to more frequent collisions. But make sure that you have things present in the gaseous state. What about the effects of temperature? Consider, if you will, a beaker containing a host of reactant particles moving around. They have a variety of different speeds and kinetic energies as they move. I'm going to show this on the graph. The number of molecules on the left axis and kinetic energy on the right axis. Here I generate a histogram showing the population of various kinetic energies. I'm going to replace this histogram with a line. This line is often referred to as a Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution and a few features about this particular line. The area underneath the line represents the number of molecules. So if I increase the number of molecules, I increase that area. Secondly, there's an average kinetic energy, a line that sort of divides the area in half. That average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature of my mixture. If I increase the temperature of my mixture, that average energy must move over to the right. Anyway, at this particular temperature, only a certain number of the molecules can react. I'm going to indicate the required activation energy needed. Species to the right of that have the opportunity to react because they're moving fast enough. But remember, they must also hit at the right angle. If I increase my temperature, I increase the average kinetic energy, shifting the average to the right. But I also must maintain the same area under the curve because I'm not adding particles. That creates the distribution that you see in red. The activation energy remains the same, that minimum required energy. But I also now have more molecules that can react, as shown here in the red. Increasing temperature has a two-fold effect on the rate of my reaction. First of all, it increases the frequencies of collision. But more importantly, it increases the proportion or fraction of collisions that are effective or successful. Generally speaking, a 10 degree increase in temperature results in a doubling of my rate. Let's look at the effect of catalyst. I'm going to consider an exothermic reaction to demonstrate this. As mentioned, we have a minimum energy requirement for my reaction to occur, shown here by the arrow in red, the activation energy for my reaction. So in order to proceed from reactants to products, the reaction follows this path. At the top of that hill, we form what's called a transition state, when my molecule or my species essentially contains a combination of both product and reactant on the verge of either returning to reactant or proceeding forward to products. The introduction of a catalyst reduces the activation energy, forming a different transition state, often involving a complex that involves both the catalyst and the reactants. 
That reduction in activation energy makes it easier for my molecules to react. Let's take a look at how this appears on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So here I have my species at a given temperature and without a catalyst, my activation energy. The introduction of a catalyst reduces that energy requirement, moving it to the left, thereby allowing a greater fraction of my molecules to react. But I'm not changing the shape of the distribution curve. All I'm doing is moving activation energy to a lower or smaller number. So catalyst reduces that energy requirement, creating a greater fraction of successful collisions. Lastly, I would like to consider the effect of surface area. Now surface area only comes to play in what we call heterogeneous reaction systems, where my reactants could be in a solid gas phase, for instance charcoal reacting with air. They could be a liquid gas phase, where the bubbles of gas might be reacting with the liquid. And we could also have a liquid-liquid reaction, where we have two immiscible or non-mixing liquids, which can only react at where the two surfaces touch. So these are what we call heterogeneous reaction systems and changes of surface area will only affect these. Consider, if you will, a charcoal, perfectly cubed piece of charcoal. The surface area of that charcoal is shown here. I can calculate that surface area because there are six faces on this cube and each face is two by two, resulting in 24 square centimeters of reacting space. So on that surface, there's 24 square centimeters, potentially, where the oxygen might be able to collide with my carbon in the charcoal. If I take that piece of charcoal that's the same size and I cut all of the dimensions in half, I create the following. My cubes are now one by one by one. And the surface area of one of those cubes would be six square centimeters. But I also produce eight cubes. So my total area is now 48. I've essentially doubled the surface area and as a result doubled the opportunity for oxygen to collide with my piece of coal or carbon. So generally speaking, increases in the surface area of heterogeneous systems will result in more frequent collisions and increases in the rate of reaction. So those are a few of the ideas behind collision theory. Remember, questions are always welcome. And thanks again for watching.